Good evening and welcome to this special edition of the Demolition Livestream. Uh, I'm your host, Mark Anthony, and thankfully I can still remember how all this works. Um, now, as many of you will know, I stopped doing our daily li uh, live shows last week so that I could concentrate on a new series of shows over on Instagram. Um, but we've since found that Instagram does have its own limitations and there are certain things we can't do over there that that we'd much rather do over here. And a case in point is tonight's show. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. As regular readers of the Demolition magazine will be aware, in November last year, I got one of the first glimpses of a new range of British built, British, let me try that again, British built dual fuel demolition robots. <coughs> Excuse me again. Now, under normal circumstances, I would have been, I would have been out on site now to see one at work to get a real flavour of just what these machines can do. But then, as we're all very painfully aware, 2020 happened. And so to bring us up to speed with the development of these machines, plus a few more besides, I'm delighted to welcome to the show uh, Chris James, who is the Managing Director of ES Manufacturing, the company behind these demolition robots. And while I'm bringing Chris in, if you have any questions as, um, on the machines or the topics we're discussing, please use the comments uh, function as we go along. But in the meantime, let's get Chris on. Good evening, Chris. Good evening, Mark. How are we doing? All good so far. Yeah, um, in, enjoying the peace and quiet at the moment. <laughs> yeah, that, that. Um, let, let's start at the beginning. How did you be, come to be involved in the demolition robot business? I mean, to be fair, it's one of those uh, strange stories, if you like, that uh, we've always manufactured. I mean, my father is a very highly qualified uh, electronic engineer. Um, we've manufactured a range of uh, very specialist uh, electrofusion tools that join the polyethylene gas and water pipes, the likes of uh, National uh, national Grid, Anglia Water, that kind of thing, uh, low, uh, manufactured lighting towers. So, you know, and then we had a big, big plant high division. So we've always had hot in-house. Uh, we've already been proud, uh, always been proud of our own being uh, in control of our own destiny. So we've had hydro, uh, highly qualified hydraulic engineers, mechanical engineers, electronic engineers, and we've always had our in-house uh, CAD and IT. Um, but yeah, a customer, an existing customer of a, of a competitor, uh, a demolition robot competitor, uh, came and spoke to us one day, um, had a, an issue with the machine, couldn't get repaired quickly. It was a hydraulic issue, um, so it was nothing that wasn't too far away from a standard excavator. Of course, these are so far, you know, uh, as are Brock and Husqvarna, so far away from standard excavators, you could be on the other end of the scale. But anyway, we did went out a look, did the repair on this, uh, on this machine, and just got talking um customer we knew very well uh you know knew our capabilities said is there any chance at all and this is five six years ago you know we could look at um you know a, a bit of a joint venture with them and and you know what would it take to get involved i mean wow you know that was just a, a very off the cuff comment but yeah you know me being me started looking into it uh dug down at the figures uh you know Huge amounts of research and development over the last five six years millions millions of pounds have gone into it um but yeah you know we just we did our market research we went across the world um you know into the mining industry the tunneling industry uh, the demolition nuclear and really that the more we found out and the more we got our in-house cab people involved and, and electronic engineers the more we thought thought it'd be viable um but not only viable we didn't want to copy, uh, you know, the existing market. We, we wanted to bring some uh, some new ideas and a new advantage, uh, advantage to the market. Yeah, there's a couple of points there. I mean, obviously, I've I've seen one of these machines in the flesh, and it does look markedly different to. Um, as you, I mean, you mentioned some of the other brands that are out there, it, it looks markedly different. And and you seem to have come to the market all guns blazing. This is not just one prototype model. This is a a full range literally from day one isn't it absolutely yeah i mean um we absolutely respect the competition you know what we know we know what's out there uh you know i'd rather talk about what we can do and, and what we look at and yes we come with a full range from the dr125 dr300 dr450 and dr850 and that really covers uh the traditional um let's say 110 in, in another manufacturer's uh, size up to their 800 uh yeah you know weighing in a 1.6 tonnes, three tonnes, four and a half, and eight and a half, well, nine tonnes, uh, close to nine tonnes. Um, so, yes, we we have prototypes and we have produced a smaller than a DR125 machine, but for our export markets with uh, United States and Canada, feedback we've got, um, 
you know, we're more happy to concentrate on the four sizes we've got there, but certainly the DR300 and above. Now, before we get into the details of the machines themselves, um, they've got quite an unusual name, or it's certainly an unusual name for me, a cooler. Where does that come from and what does it mean? Uh, I mean, look, and again, I'll ha happily answer that, but uh, why uh, why Coca-Cola or, or McDonald's, you know? Uh, but it, it, it's, uh, it's uh, you know, a cooler uh, means uh, shark in Russian. Um, two, re two reasons, really. Um, well, three. One, we like the sound of it. Uh, two, uh, it, it lends its name nicely and the design for, uh, you know, fins on the machine. So, you know, that, that ties in. And look... Uh, we we hope that the Akuda will be top of the food chain. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's got a, you know it aesthetically pleasing to look at with the fins, and yeah, it's uh, uh, you know you don't normally mess with a shark, do you, Mark? So uh, I, well, I certainly don't know. I, I I haven't been in the sea since I saw Jaws, um, <laughs> and I, I do like the uh, top of the food chain. I, I don't know who's writing your copy for you, but they're doing a good job. Um, so yeah. looking at the machines themselves, you know, can you take me through? I mean, I've mentioned the fact that they're dual fuel, but can you take me through some of the key features and benefits of the machines as you see them? How long have you got, Mark? <laughs> well, I've got as long as the audience will st stick yeah, around. They're yeah, sticking yeah. around at the moment, so that's you can good, carry on. No, oh, no, that's good news. Uh, look, something, you know, we've always found as a manufacturer, you know, what floats somebody's boat doesn't float another person's boat. Um, you know, but we've, we, we, we went to the market and we listened, you know, uh, and uh, I'm not saying other manufacturers don't, but we certainly asked uh, the market, the people we spoke to, you know, what they liked and, and didn't like. Uh, and as I say, we, we don't look to copy, we look to uh, to change things and move forward. Um, so, you know, our machine has got a much longer uh, arm, lots longer reach than, than we, we believe the competition. So, you know, much higher reach, uh, further and deeper. Um, you know, with the, you know, we have a, it's powered by a world leading Kubota engine in, in every size. Uh, and then we have a, a German uh, electric motor. Um, so, you know, pure world class engineering for the components we, we buy in. And with the, the software that is designed in-house uh, and installed in-house, uh, that's coupled up with the uh, German motor, allows us to run a, at least at least 30% smaller generator power source in electric mode than the competition, which you know ticks a very big relevant tick on the green box and it's a sim you know it's a lower running cost, uh, simple as that. The DR125 uh, for stability has an under uh, expanding undercarriage. All models can come with dozer blade front or back, outriggers front or back, or outriggers at the front, dozer blade at the back. Um, you know, in demolition, we spoke to a number of uh, international customers that like the double dozer blade um, to, to push the rubble. Now, look, they said you can't please all the people all the time, but you tell us what setup you want, and and you know we can supply that. Um, the remote control, we believe. Is you know, it's certainly uh, a very advanced, technologically safe unit. So it's got an anti-tilt sensor in that you can set to varying different degrees. So if the user was to trip or to fall, uh, the, the, uh, the unit cuts out. So if the unit was to fall on the ground and hit the joysticks or something like that, the machine is not going to be spinning around. You know, it's not going to be causing a, a danger. So, you know, we've looked at vital health and safety because let's face it, all of these machines one of their key selling points are the health and safety uh, benefits and advantages where you're having a man or a lady uh, not in not in danger uh, and operating it from 50 100 200 meters away um you know we've been a british manufacturer having the items in stock here customers have got access to fairly priced parts instantly you know we carry a full range uh, of, uh, of, of parts in stock other slight advantages of tracking speed, it can track, uh, you know, quite a bit faster uh, than, than a standard uh, demolition robot. Um, the slewing speed as well, you know, so we've, we've, we've gone for speed and power uh, across the range. Uh, and then, you know, two other, I'd like to say unique or definitely two other advantages dealing with myself and my, my family business. Now that we're small enough to, to care, but big enough to compete. Um, you know, you've got access, you are working directly with a manufacturer. So if you come, you're, you know, one of the customers comes to us and said, we don't quite need this, we don't quite need that. And of course, they're prepared to work with us on development costs and, and you know, place an order at the end. 
then yeah, you're working with a manufacturer and we're happy to be proactive and flexible. And then finally, in the UK, uh, and we're talking to an international partner for a, literally across the world, we're able to offer very bespoke manufacturer supported finance. Two years interest free, you know, no interest for two years, small deposits of anything from 0% deposit, subject to status, uh, up to 10% or more if you want to put more down over one to five years. You know, if you want a finance deal, if, if £150,000, because for me it certainly is, and I'm sure for many people watching this, is too much of an initial outlay, we can get you aggressive, low rate, higher purchase or lease agreements over, you know, one to five years, um, you know, making it very, very affordable for you. See, that's another example, Chris. I, I, I don't like to, to sort of, you know, I'm not in the job of, of, of selling your product for you, but you do seem to have come to the market basically said. fully formed. You, you know, you... Sorry? I said you said something different off air. You said you were going to sell it for I'm joking. Well, I, well I, I, listen, we didn't discuss the commission, but as I say, you, you, you seem to have come to the market fully formed. Even things like having the finance in, in place, you know, that's, that's not the normal way, is it? No, I, look, I mean... I don't want to sit here and say we know it all because we certainly don't. And that's what I said. We approach the market, but we have been in business 33 years. You know, we have been on the other side. So, and we, you know, we've bought, uh, you know, we, 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 back in our plant high days, which I'm delighted. I couldn't be more pleased to say we're, we're well and truly out of it and have been for 12 plus months. But, you know, we dealt with quality brands like Kubota, Bobcat, Doosan, you know, Caterpillar, Hitachi, you know, and we know what we wanted, you know, and even from the service side. So ES Manufacturing has been going 33 years. But we changed our name back in February last year from Electro Services. Now, Electro Services started in my family house in the garage, my father servicing electronic engineer, electronic equipment, sorry. And the reason why I bring that up is, you know, we've seen stuff when we manufacture, we've seen it from the service angle, that if it does break down, you know, on site or whatever it may be, or just as routine service, that parts and components are easy to get at, as well as being robust and reliable. But if there is a problem or a service issue, it's there to be, you know, it's not going to take three hours, five hours, because I don't like buzzwords and cliches, but time is money. And our engineers, if we're servicing, our time is money. Um, so, yeah, we have come to it from a, from a from the 33 years experience, from that electronic experience that, you know, my father and many other people within the business have, the hydraulics, the mechanics, we know that you know with how aggressive and obviously it could be a different market but how aggressive the plant hire market is and you know the option to have asset finance is the only way that uh, you know a lot of the volvos the kabotas the komatsus uh, are able to shift the volume they do because you know people can't afford to just spend out hundreds and hundreds of thousands so they need affordable asset finance so yeah you know we've not sitting here and saying we've, we've, we know it all or done it all, but we've tried to look at it from the, the health and safety angle, the operator's angle, the accountant's angle, um, you know, this access to fairly priced spares. And we think we've done a reasonable job of ticking all the boxes. Yeah, I, I made the mistake of sending you a message in advance of this uh, get together. And I, I mentioned the fact that you were coming into a saturated market, which you very kindly put me straight on. Uh, but you are coming into a market where there is one brand, and we all know who that is. I mean, their name is effectively synonymous with this market. How do you compete with, with that level of history that, that that company has got? Absolutely. And, you know, like I say, the, the market, uh, for many reasons, is big enough for, you know, for the for the company you mentioned, there's another company that would probably like to be mentioned as well that have been competing over the last five or six years. Look, so answer your question, how do we compete with that? Well, straight away, we compete by being the only company in the world that I'm aware of, and please somebody stretch, uh, put me straight, but certainly against the manufacturers we're insinuating there, Mark, that supplies a dual diesel and electric in one unit. Now, of course, some of these people watching might not want or need a dual unit, and, that, and that's fine. We can provide electric only, and we can provide diesel only. However, once absolutely, once you get to the DR300 and above, I am very, very confident that aside of the asset finance, our price is more competitive than our competition versus their single model. So their single diesel or their single electric, 
our dual unit is more uh, competitively priced. You know, and, and of course, with the German motor, the Kubota engine, the British engineering, you know, we believe uh, it is a quality uh, product as well. So, you know, I would point to that factor as a big point. And then also, as I sent you, Mark, yeah, I mean, uh, from the, and I've got the, uh, the, the email up here, uh, kindly provided by, um, by uh, Eleanor, uh, another publication. I'm, you know, I know you guys know each other, but, you know, uh, this came from uh, the Robotics Business Review, uh, National Demolition Association, and it reads exactly this. The construction robot market, so the key words there, the construction robot market, is to rise from 22.7 million in 2018 to 226 million in 2025, which is a 9% growth, compound growth year on year. Even if that is the worldwide market, uh, of, you know, that's still a massive increase, but I don't believe that accounts for tunneling, mining, uh, nuclear, etc. But even if it does, you know, a thousand percent increase in seven years. So, you know, and we all know health and safety. We all are committed to health and safety. You know, and that's the way the world moves. So I think there's, you know, yeah, you know, yeah. We're, we're, our, our shark will be top of the food chain. We hope our cooler. Um, but, we you know, there is, you know, there's enough room for everybody, I believe. There's a couple of things I'd like to unpack from that, if I may, Chris. Uh, one of the things that you mentioned there is this dual fuel, which obviously I've I've told lots of people about. How mm. does, in, in your mind, how does that work? Is that diesel to get it on station and then electric to work, or is that literally down to the customer's preference? Uh, that, that, I mean, it's literally the uh, one thing I didn't have is a uh, you know is a, is a remote control by the side of me. I, I should have done, but the, it's the flick of a switch. Each it's a flick of the switch, so you turn the unit off. And you're currently in diesel mode. You flick the switch, a toggle switch, like your light switch. You know, a toggle. You flick it on or off, or up or down for diesel or electric, and then you're in that mode. As simple as that. Now, you know, something as simple as, and honestly, you know, as I said, th different things tick different people's boxes. But we've had people, uh, especially, uh, you know, a couple of shows here, we've had people saying, "Oh my God, well, I need the electric motor inside or in a tunnel or whatever it might be." But wow, we can unload it from the vehicle. We can track it, you know, uh, 300 yards, 500 meters what, across site, and we don't have to keep plugging or unplugging or lifting or whatever, you know, it can get there on its own steam. Now, yes, of course it can. And that's nice as that's a huge advantage, but, you know, we didn't really uh, do it for that reason. Although one of the things when we, you asked my initial question, how did we get into the market? When we looked at the electric only, you know, and we, we had, you know, 600 standard excavators at that time on a, on a nationwide hire fleet. We couldn't get our heads around it. A, the cables laying everywhere, and B, how the heck do you, you know, do you, do you load it and unload this thing, um, you know, without any diesel power? Uh, and my personal opinion and the feedback we're getting is quite hard, you know, with a bit of a pain in the backside. So it's got that, you know, straight advantage straight away, but then depending on what your contract uh, stipulates you might whatever for whatever reason have to use diesel or choose to use diesel or you might absolutely certainly have to use electric if you're inside now you also mentioned in that survey by the uh, national demolition association um they they would describe these as construction robots obviously you're here on on the demolition live stream but these these machines obviously do go beyond just the demolition field what sort of applications are you expecting to see i mean you've mentioned mining and tunneling is there anything beyond that yeah, I mean, look, you know, I've had a couple of bespoke inquiries, and we, you know, I'm uh, very close to a to a, a guy uh, that works on the rail, uh, and you know, he he's using robots on the rail um, to for works, uh, you know, uh, yes. Yeah, so, so they, they have had adapt uh, been adapted to, to rail runners, and they go up and down the line um, doing rail works with suction excavators and, and other things. Uh, obviously, as you say, there's the nuclear. Um, you know, there's just there's just there's so many opportunities. And as you say, as I say, you know, we are the manufacturer. So, you know, without being stupid, but I've been serious. If you've got two arms on a thing, front and back, if you're going to prepare, you know, if you're going to work with us and pay for the R&D, we'll create one with you with two arms. You know, what, you know, that's, a, I can't see that ever being needed. But, you know, if you've got an application where you don't want to be or can't be close to what you're breaking, cutting, crushing, lifting, moving, um, then, you know, there's just so many you know, so many possibilities.
Yeah, I mean, I, I guess ultimately this is, it's not an excavator in the truest sense, but it is a tool carrier, isn't it? I mean, and, and ultimately, I guess the, the flexibility and the amount of applications you can put it in is, is going to be hinged on, on the attachments that you can hang off the front end, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah, or I, I, exactly what you want to what you want to put on the front end, and like you know, what I can't go to greater pains to to, to get across, as I'm sure you know, you know the other two main manufacturers would support, is these things couldn't be further from standard excavators. Nothing wrong with standard excavators at all, but standard excavators are made for a very different industry and application completely. You know, everybody's machine is a in a standard excavator term is a pocket rocket is a you know is a is a motorbike it's a, a, a just an absolute engines on wheels the power to weight ratio uh, is immense so yeah you know of course you could pretty much use it like a standard excavator but you know why would you pay any one of us uh two hundred thousand pounds when you can probably get a standard excavator for, for fifty thousand pounds but you know you, you're just getting such a difference in power such a difference in uh, uh, flexibility you know you might as well compare it <laughs> i don't know i really don't know you know a uh, yeah I, I can't think of a stupid comparison mark but there is no <laughs> So the, the obvious question, which is the question that obviously is on the tip of everyone's tongue at the moment, how has the, the COVID-19 pandemic impacted upon your rollout plans? Well, it's been wonderful, obviously. No, no. It's, uh, you know, it's, look, to, to, to be honest, in, as a business, and look, there's been across the world, for our so, you know, it's immense financial pain and impact and you know the, the, the night monday the 23rd of march without even looking uh whatever it was i think it sticks in my brain yeah well it was the, the night that boris johnson you know in the uk said you know we're on lockdown <laughs> then i did what i believe was to be the right thing and we said to all our staff we're on lockdown uh, i think furlough agreed that uh, existed at that point but we said look we're gonna and we paid all our staff 100 percent during that time even people that weren't that were new to the business that the, the work didn't qualify for furlough now we had two sales sales uh, positions advertised i actually used that time to increase that uh, uh, to five and during that time we've taken on five extra sales reps for the uk we've taken on uh, an assistant uh, production manager we've taken on two more engineers we've just tightened up the workshop a little bit so we've actually used the time to have a slight recalibration if you like so you know we've made i haven't been sitting there crying into my, crying into my gin um you know uh you know that, that affect the taste of it anyway which i, I don't like <laughs> um you know um but yeah we, you know we've we've tried to we, we've, we've increased our we've updated our crm our customer relationship system with our it we've redone our marketing literature uh you know we yeah you know we've, we've tried to of course of course it's been horrifically painful I, i'm pleased to say you know the uk government has backed us you know so that's that's a, a, a hugely um, valued and, and, and uh, appreciated. That's the word. I, I, I will make sure that this business, you know, pays the uh, <laughs> pays the UK taxpayer back for that. You know, but yeah, we've, we've we've recalibrated where we can. Of course, it hasn't helped production. Of course, it stopped production for eight ten weeks. You know, we came back fully on the Tuesday after bank holiday two weeks ago. You know, the twenty sixth of May, whatever it may be. Um, but in that time, you know, uh, I have personally, um, as you know, I've personally worked hard because, you know, I haven't been on furlough as such. I'm a, I'm a director um, and we've, we've made plans and tried to do, you know, the best for the future. So in the, in the most stupid, horrible, weird way, 10% without the phones ringing, as you, you know, said, and it's enjoying the peace and quiet, everything like that, it's actually given some time to, to do lots of little things and pull things together that you normally wouldn't have time now i don't ever want a repeat of it and i never never wanted it you know and it's horrific what's happened but we've used it to the best of our advantage yeah, it's refreshing to hear. Uh, I, I have got a few more questions, but we've had a couple of comments in. First off is Craig Rule, who you, I guess you will know, proud to be part of this fantastic company. <laughs> he's probably sat next door to you at the moment, isn't no, he? No, he's not, but he's, he's, he's probably one of the pay rise or something stupid like that. You know? so, uh, <laughs> I, I, um, we've I, had a... I can say now that's not happening, Mark. So you know. <laughs> We've had another one in from uh, Joanne Hindley. Don't know who Joanne is. She's just saying <laughs> hello. She doubles up as my partner. There we go. Oh, right. Okay. In that, in that case, yeah, you know, it's just your fan club, really, isn't it? Uh, well, um, I'm, 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 
I have got a, a more pertinent question in this, or a, a second, but just want to get back. The, the demolition robot is, and I was quite surprised actually when I came to your your launch. The demolition robot is not your only product offering for the demolition business. You've got a hydraulic breaker range as well. Yes, yeah, yeah. We manufacture hydraulic breaker, the Molotov. Um, Russian again. There's a, there's a theme there. Uh, Russian for hammer. Russian for hammer, Mark Molotov. Um, yeah. So you know, we've got the Molotov range. Uh, Craig, you know, and, and all the sales team that you know, that's that's their that's their livelihood. That's their bread and butter. You know, uh, we we absolutely want and need to be selling Akuda robots. You know. Uh, Four or five a month, you know, would be lovely, and that gives you an idea for you know we're not aiming for fifty a month, and and, and I think of course we'd love fifty a month, um, but yeah, the Molotov hydraulic breaker is the bread and butter, is the volume, is the you know, and we go from micro zero point eight ton through to fifty five ton, um, again in stock, tens and tens and tens of them, constantly in stock, thousands of spares that the, the, the reps, the, my business development managers that are watching, you know. They know they're welcome to bring customers to our factory for the for the robot, uh, for the hammers, and and you know to see the stock of this, the the the, the uh, components and the items in you know uh, and the hammers themselves. So yes, we do that, and then we're proud to have uh, uh, joined up with uh, Trevi Bene, uh, Italian company who uh, supply across the world for their full range of attachments. You know, uh, crushers, shears, pulverizers. You know, uh, I was in, very impressed uh, with Paolo uh, and, and all of the company um, in Italy, their production facility, their testing facility, their commitment, their 20,000 square feet, I think, uh, a, a, a building just with components in, spares, you know. Um, we've supplied some spares to a customer uh, up in uh, Yorkshire today, literally uh, in stock in Italy, because, you know, as we feel our way, we can't be stocking catalog that thick but in stock in Italy the customer is going to get them uh, tomorrow so it doesn't really matter you know whether they're in London Glasgow or Devon the customer's still got next day service so yeah I mean we, you know now we can offer a true to the demolition industry and, and all other industries you know whether it's a micro or you know a three ton shear truly Benny go up to 300 ton so it married up perfectly so you know they don't do hammers so that the, the, the marry up, the relationship, the synergy, um, you know, fitted the Akula range, didn't compete with the Molotov, and we're now able to offer, you know, a full portfolio. So that rate, so that uh, Trevi Benny range is going beyond just attachments for the Akula range. It's it's literally that's the entire it. thing. That's it. So we, we looked at, you know, we looked at, and and that was the reason for the opening discussions was. Uh, you know, for, for, to, to complement the Akula range. My, you, you know, your viewers will get a feel for me already. Um, you know, my opinion is, now look, we don't want to do things that are unrelated and, and water it down and be a jack of all trades because that's not what this business has ever been. You know, we specialise in certain areas. But why would we, if we're supplying a, a crusher for an eight, 10 tonne machine, why would we not supply a crusher for a 50 tonne machine? You know, I saw no, no incentive to not supply the full range. So, you know, we, we've done a, a deal that we're very comfortable with with uh, Trevi Bene. Um, I say, you know, they're a tr they've been going thirty years, turned over thirty million euros. Um, you know, dealing I think a hundred countries uh, with X amount of dealers. You know, so they're yeah, and they're they've got the same kind of refreshing attitude. You know, they're hungry, uh, they're committed, they're committed to customer service. You know, they truly are. You see the spares they keep in stock uh, and the speed they get back to us and, and my sales staff at, um, you know, that they welcome customers to their facility, you know, but they, they say, just drop in, you know, if you don't think we're making this here, just drop in. But, you know, obviously they like a bit of notice, but yeah, they, they have the same ethos in it and it fitted really well. That shows real confidence when, when somebody's just willing for, uh, uh, willing to allow you to just turn up at a moment's notice, doesn't it? Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to get back to the uh, where, you know, the obvious question is where can viewers find out more? But we've had a, a question in here from uh, Jeff Pinion. And I actually saw Jeff at the launch of your machine. Um, just 
I've just lost the stream for a second there, but I, I basically he wants to see where, when he can actually get to grips with one of your machines. Any idea on when or where that's likely to be? Well, we've got a DR300 literally coming off the production line. You know, it should have been off two, three weeks ago, but obviously, you know, we all know that story. But yeah, we've got a DR a DR300 and a DR450 coming off the production line within the next two weeks maximum. Uh, you know, then we've got our uh, demonstration facility at Bibblesweigh in Bedfordshire, so 15, 20 minutes from where I'm sitting now. And that, yeah, that's specifically there, you know, for exactly that, Jeff. And all, you know, so you can come and have a touch and feel. Uh, we've got Trevi Bene shears there, relevant size shears and crushes. Um, yeah, and, you know, if if you're in France, uh, bonjour, uh, if you're in France, so you can uh, you can see one with our, our, our French dealer uh, that we, uh, that we uh, proudly, um, you know, uh, signed up, Dynamic uh, TP. That's Dynamic TP, Sylvain is... Uh, one of the, the two directors there and we're very proud to bring them on board uh, as a fresh they've been going nearly three years but they've gone from nothing to i think four million turnover in in, in you know uh, in, in those three or four years um again they have the right attitude you know when we take i, I want actually i want to point this out to be fair when we take on dealers you know we are not interested primarily you know in the, in the amount of cash and the quick order for five ten machines of course that's nice but that is secondary a primary concern for me for my brand for the reputation and you take you you know brands now that i'm not saying for one second we are i could ever aspire but we aspire to be like caterpillar you know that name that name is synonymous with quality reliability world class now you know we know there's competition in the market we know we're going to be looking to get ridiculed or shot at. So we want to make sure the dealers we approve are committed. If our customer phones up and there is an issue or technical issue or, whatever, or, or question, we know they're going to get back to them. I'm wholly uninterested in having a million pound check, selling somebody five, six, seven machines, selling them to them once, then not supporting them, and then with Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, et cetera, et cetera, the cooler range getting a bad name because the dealer didn't back it up. So that's, you know, that that's not what we're about. You know, we are, in, we're, we've been going 33 years. Um, you know, I, I will make sure that this business is going another 33 years and the cooler range is, you know, a pivotal part of the success of this business going forward. Fair play. Um, the final question then, I guess, uh, Chris, before I let you get back to your uh, evening, is where can viewers find out more? Is there a website that you'd like to direct people to? Yeah, and I'll be honest, yeah, there is. So it's uh, www.esmanufac.com. So manufac, shopping at the sea. So esmanufac.com, which is obviously a short for ES Manufacturing. We are uh, upgrading the website. Uh, but it's perfectly fine, perfectly happy with it. Um, it's... I've not, not been ever for one for flashing images and, and, and scrolling and everything like that. We are getting more content on there, but yeah, it's it's uh, it, it's simple to find your way around and, and informative. Um, yeah, you know. Uh, but like I say, if you want to find out more, the best thing is please email sales at esmanufac. So that's Echo Sierra Manufac.com. Sales at esmanufac.com. And either myself, Paul Grobler, who's our international sales manager. Or one of our other six UK uh, dedicated, passionate, driven sales managers will gladly be in touch with you and, and uh, give you all the information and answer any questions uh, that you may have. That's fantastic. Look, Chris, I'm going to let you get back to the uh, to, to your evening. I really appreciate you joining us, and I I, I, I wish you every success with the company. Uh, as I say, I've, I've had I've had a cursory look at the machine. I look forward to seeing one in, in the uh, in the flesh or in the iron, as it were. Uh, but every success with with that going forward. Thank you. And obviously, you know, we'll talk about, but you know, you're very welcome down in the next couple of weeks, you know, to, to along with Jeff and whoever to have a touch and feel and yeah, you know, get a get a much deeper, uh, much deeper insight. It's a long while since somebody invited me out for a touch and a feel, so I may take you up uh, on that. Uh, there you go, there you go. It's your lucky night, Mark. It's your lucky <laughs> night, mate. All right, then. Chris, all the very best. Take care. Cheers now. Bye bye. Bye bye. 
So there you are. Um, looks like we had a, a, a good crowd in tonight. So thank you very much for joining us for that. I um, hope you found it interesting. Um, I'm going to uh, take this video and put it over on our YouTube channel. Um, and when I do that, I will add a card to the uh, to the video as well because we've actually filmed uh, – the machine was static at the time, but we actually filmed the uh, cooler machine uh, at the launch, as I say, back in November. So you can actually get a, a, a better handle on exactly what it looks like. Um, Nothing much more to say, really. Um, I used to finish these things with stay safe and stay well. That's still the very much the uh, the final message. Look after yourselves, look after your family, your friends and your colleagues. Thanks for joining us tonight. I really appreciate it because uh, I realise it's out of hours. Um, but we're back here again, bizarrely, uh, at 6 o'clock tomorrow night as well. Um, we've got a, a double header tomorrow. We've got um, the guys from Cantrack and uh, the guys from uh, Gap Group talking about um, plug and play asset tracking software and systems. Um, I've got to admit, when, when you say that out loud, it doesn't sound like the most fascinating uh, subject. But when you think that uh, people and vehicles and plant are the two biggest costs for any company in this business, um, being able to track them efficiently and effectively and simply, above all else, um, has a real benefit. So if you can join us tomorrow night, we'll be here at 6 o'clock, um, as I say, with um, the guys from Cantrack and Gap Group. In the meantime, have a great evening. Thanks for joining us, and I'll see you again very, very soon.